Michigan State funds and Ford uh, Motor Company. Uh, he uh, received early promotion uh, in tenure in 2009. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Hua. Well, uh, thank uh, Professor Xin Li's invitation, so I get a chance to visit the uh, Louisiana State University. Actually, this is the first time I've been uh, to this uh, state. Uh, I like the environment and the climate, actually. Uh, much better than the uh, Michigan uh, there. It's uh, much colder than here, actually. Okay, so today uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, multi-scale geometry processing uh, in visual computing. So, so basically, I want to give you the, uh, the perspective, like how to use geometry computing in uh, visual computing uh, applications like medical imaging, graphics, and also some like uh, 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 visualization uh, applications. So, so I would rather uh, focus on the application side. So for the mass uh, probably you can figure out more details uh, through the papers. Okay. <coughs> so let's start with the, uh, some uh, uh, imaging modalities. So give you a little uh, uh, introduction. So here it shows the uh, magnetic lensless imaging. So basically, it's the uh, we call MRI used to the uh, basically acquire the uh, internal organ of the human body. Like in this case, is the brain. Okay. So you can see the uh, uh, the three uh, section like the uh, sagittal, coronal, or axial view of the uh, human brain. So this captures the anatomical structures. Okay. So more straightforward, so we can use like geometric, uh, geometric algorithms to process and to uh, apply on this uh, image uh, data, so we can see uh, more later. So besides, besides those kind of like anatomical imaging, also lots of function, uh, functional imaging modality emerges recently, like functional MR, or in this case it's the uh, division tensor imaging. So basically this used to uh, uh, check the neuron connectivity is inside the brains, okay, inside the brain. So how uh, our brain connected from different parts of the brain and how these uh, functional signals transmitted between each other. So, so that's the, uh, uh, from the uh, diffusion. So here, the, the stream line shows here indicating the neuron connectivities, okay. And also like uh, uh, position uh, emission tomography, okay, which basically rely on the uh, uh, chaser injected on the human brain and then uh, measure the brain uh, activity patterns of the brain. So this can be also used for diagnosis of certain diseases like tumor, epilepsy, okay, in uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, applications, okay. But all these uh, things uh, require very fundamental uh, 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 technique like matching or say registration. So for same subject, this is not a problem anymore actually uh, from latest uh, development because if you just say uh, 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 genes brain, you got it one day and you scan it another day, after all it's the same person's brain, okay? So you can align them rather easily, okay? And also people say, yeah, then maybe I need like multi-modality registration. So oh, this brain was scanned by CT and then the other day scanned by, by MR. So how do we register different modalities? This job has been taken by uh, uh, engineering people already because they invented the uh, hybrid scanner. So you can take multiple sequence, multiple modality at one shot. So basically they put patients, so like this one, this like a PET, it's called a PET CT. So they can do PET CT at one sequence. So basically you can, patient that goes through the scanner once, they uh, get PET data, CT data, and then recently they have a PET MR, PET MR CT all together, integrated. So it's integrated scanner. So, so it's from my perspective, so my uh, point of, personal point of view, if you work on the uh, registration of a single subject, even for different time points or say different modalities, you register. So it's not real, real research problem anymore from uh, application point of view. Okay. So, but so if you have like a unit subject, so then that's become very difficult. Okay. So that's how. Let's t take a look. Imagine how doctor make a decision on certain suspicious uh, case, like say, oh, this is a tumor, this is epilepsy. Basically, they already learned a lot of cases in their head, okay, in their brain, they already acquired this knowledge. So basically they compare this brain against the cases they had before, they saw before, and say, oh, yeah, here looks very suspicious, some abnormal, so they do go the uh, ROI, go the region of interest, and do the uh, analysis, okay? So how do you map this type of mechanisms into the uh, computational uh, procedure? Then basically the fundamental thing you need to do is mapping registration, okay? So how do you align them together to the single template and make them comparable, okay? So that's the uh, very challenging topic because the brain shares a significant uh, uh, similarity because it's a brain, okay? No matter it's a monkey's brain, even a human's brain, they share 
significant similarity, okay? But they also have like physiological variance. So each brain is different. So how do we accommodate the uh, similarity and also uh, tolerate the, uh, the uh, uh, physiological variance between the subjects and then make a relatively meaningful alignment and then facilitate a statistic analysis? So that's very interesting, actually, very uh, still very hot research topic in uh, medical imaging uh, field. Okay, so here it shows you the, uh, uh, the, the, even for the 2D, so here it shows you the, uh, uh, basically the uh, electrode, okay, measure. It's called EEG, electrophysiological uh, measure. Basically, they place the grid directly on the cortical surface. So this still is the gold standard to measure certain uh, brain activities. But most likely, you cannot do this because it's invasive. You have to open the skull and then place the electro grid on top of the uh, neurocortical surface and then to measure the uh, electro electrical signal. So you can see the electrical signal directly. So hot area, cold area, so how brain uh, uh, functions. Okay. <coughs> Similar like registration mapping, these kind of things. It's also in graphics. Okay. So for example, you have motion, animator or design motion for one object. Can you automatically transfer the motion from one object to the other? Okay, so this kind of motion transfer also needs the uh, meaningful matching alignment, so you can afford this kind of uh, motion transfer automatically. Because if you already uh, had a movie for dark, maybe you can reuse some of the motion designed by the animator, so you can basically uh, rely on the uh, motion transfer instead of uh, redo the uh, animation design. Okay, <coughs> like in vision, also like for face recognition, so. What you want to do is basically align faces. You want dense mapping first, okay? So you want to compare eyes to eyes, nose to nose. You want to differentiate this person is not the person you are looking for. Or so basically, this is for recognition purpose. It also uh, needs the uh, mapping and the things directly, okay? <coughs> so, so uh, for two D, so in order to get a good registration, okay? So first thing you need to do is we find reliable features, okay? Reliable features. Uh, how do we find the reliable features we can support, which supports the uh, uh, mapping and registration, right? So in uh, 2D image processing or signal processing, like scale space has been very frequently used in uh, feature extraction. So basically they get 2D images here and then run the Gaussian blur, just like you see in the uh, uh, left side, okay? You see left side, okay? So this basically is the uh, 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 image blurred by Gaussian, okay? So then create a sequence of smooth image. So in this case, all together form the scale space. Okay, form the scale space. And can this kind of things has an analog case in 3D surface? Okay, or in n-dimensional space. Okay. So this is still the open problem. So how do we align this? How do we uh, apply this kind of uh, scale space processing on? So this is some laser things. Okay, so like in 2D, we know, right? So Lindbergh, uh, 1990s, uh, gave the uh, definition for scale space uh, theory. So basically, you get the Gaussian blur applied on the image. You get the blurry image. And here, that require the operator doesn't introduce any additional signal during this sequence, okay? So the features getting fewer and fewer along this sequence, okay? Any feature you find here, you can find original root in the original scale. Okay, so basically during this kind of signal smoothing process, you cannot introduce any additional signal. Okay, so, so that's the uh, principle uh, 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 concept, okay, actually principle in the uh, scale space processing. Uh, in 2004, actually low gave a very nice shift, uh, it's called a shift scale invariant feature extraction from these 2D images. Okay, how do you extract the very robust features from these images and then facilitate, say, uh, uh, image processing, right? So, uh, like here, <coughs> there are several like uh, uh, requirements. Okay, first one is the scale invariant. Okay, so any signal you, you take, and under the scale of the uh, W, okay, it has the original has original uh, uh, root. Okay, and also causality means non enhancement of local extrema. So all the extrema you find in the later process. Okay, you can find is. Uh, 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 basically the uh, original root, okay, original root in the fine scale, okay, so that if you want to prove it, basically you prove the boundary conditions due to the partial, you're always falling within the boundary, okay, within the boundary, so no extremas were jumping out of that domain, okay, 
and also uh, other uh, uh, nice uh, like semi-group structures. So basically, you can do a convolution uh, based on uh, time t scale, time t one scale, time t two scale. You can find the t one plus t two scales. So these are all uh, uh, very nice uh, properties in the uh, scale space processing, scale space uh, theory. Okay, but this doesn't really has very uh, straightforward analog in a uh, uh, 2D case. Okay, so this is gi just give you the uh, uh, why this like time point here because some slides probably I taken from my students to talk. So let me see this slide. So this is a, a Gaussian, we know, right? This is a Gaussian, okay? This is a Gaussian uh, kernel, okay? So if you directly use Gaussian kernel to diffuse uh, image, okay, diffuse a signal, okay? So basically this is a, a isotropic diffusion, okay? You can convert this to a iso iso isotropic com conversion. Basically, the solution of the isotropic uh, diffusion equation basically is Gaussian. So this can, you can, you can get the uh, proof very quickly, okay? So, <coughs> but, can we just directly apply Gaussian onto a 3D surface to get similar things, right? So this, that would be straightforward. So I just take the any point, okay? And then I run a Gaussian, okay? I define the radius, define the, uh, okay, I directly run it on Gaussian, okay? And then I do this kind of smoothing, smoothing. I can either do smoothing on the vertices or I can do smoothing on the properties, sampled on the vertices, like a curvature normal directly on the surface. But unfortunately, this kind of uh, uh, things doesn't give you the actually correct proof, okay, for the uh, maximum principle uh, theory and also the cash casualty, okay. So this has been done by uh, actually this is a uh, 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 Anita Bavashin's work in 2005. Seagraph they did this mesh silencing. Uh, uh, so basically, that's what they do is just use Euclidean distance, okay, directly use Euclidean distance for any point, and based on Euclidean distance, run a Gaussian blur, run Gaussian blur. So the Gaussian kernel, the radius is defined by. Uh, 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 Euclidean distance directly, so not on the manifold, not on anything. So this will cause a lot of like numerical problems, and also uh, it's c you can pr you cannot prove it's uh, follow the uh, maximum principle or uh, casualty uh, things. Okay, and like in uh, uh, Mark Pauli actually in 2006, and another like spatial feeling on points. Okay, so you can directly on points, but still basically that's what they did. So you take a P zero and you do smoothing, smoothing, and then you get the. Uh, uh, smooth to pn okay smooth to pn so and in this sequence you can try to find the features okay you can try to find the features okay so today uh, i give you uh, uh, several uh, concepts we have recently worked out for for doing the uh, multi scale uh, processing okay so i quickly go through the three things and then uh, we can see uh, some of the uh, demos okay <coughs> so the first thing we did is okay so just like what we did okay since we have like very good scale space processing for image, so can we convert the 3D to image, okay, and run everything onto uh, this kind of 2D image, okay? So th at least this gives us very uh, uniform uh, domain and very uh, uh, simple data structure to to apply the Gaussian, okay? So what we do is uh, we uh, map this to the uh, Canonical domain. Okay, in this case, we map the things to the square. Okay, of course, if this is the closed surface, you need a boundary to you need a single boundary to uh, slice open the, uh, the closed surface, and then map to the boundary. Okay, so here shows you the uh, this image here shows you the uh, mean curvature. Okay, so it shows you the mean curvature. So we sample mean curvature here, and then because when you map the deformed the de the, the curved surface to the plane domain, inevitably uh, you will have a uh, Distortion. Okay, you will have a distortion. So here is the uh, distortion uh, uh, map. Okay, basically the original area and map to here. If it becomes small, like for this case, you can see you see two eyes squeezed together, and that means here is like a larger distortion. If it's a larger distortion, so here there is a larger distortion rate. It's measured by conformal factor. Okay, it's measured by conformal factor. Basically, it's the area in the original surface over the area on the 2D domain, okay, and get to the uh, uh, conform factor. So here what we do is we overlay these two channels together to form the uh, shape vector image. So we take the Gaussian 
and take the conform factor together. Okay, we form, form a, a vector image. Okay, so this just shows you another case. If it's a brain surface, for example, you can map to the uh, uh, 2D, so you can still see the the gyri. You see basically the valleys. Okay, the gyri in, in, in medical term they call it uh, uh, gyri and the south side. So you can see the gyri, south side, basically the valleys and then ridge. You can see pretty clear still in the 2D domain indicated by uh, mean curvature. And this shows you the deformation, area deformation factor. Okay, so basically we call it conform factor. So overlay this together, you get the shape vector image. So here we use a <coughs> green and uh, red, okay, two channels representing the uh, mean curvature and the conform factor respectively, okay. Now, so, well, this is just like the computation I mentioned, okay, so if you want to compute the mean curvature, so that's the equation we use, and for the uh, conform factor, so this area, okay, in the original surface and then in the functional domain, so you compute the, uh, uh, basically the uh, conform factor, okay, all together you can form the uh, the area, how do you compute areas? You can use this uh, equation. Okay, so that's how you compute these two, two measures. Okay? And then uh, the things we use is, because this is very special image, okay? So we don't directly take the uh, distance directly from the domain, like a pixel distance from this point to this point. We take the Euclidean distance directly computed on the surface, okay? Because even though they appear very close on the 2D domain, but they actually are far from each other in the uh, manifold surface because the distortion, right? Because you're mapping from the uh, curved surface to the 2D, you get, the, uh, you get the distortion. So we have to uh, account for this kind of distortion using the uh, Euclidean distance. So we can pre-compute the distance in its full neighborhood, okay, in its full neighborhood. And then uh, we uh, <coughs> use the uh, shape vector image diffusion, okay, shape vector image diffusion. So here, uh, the partial i basically is the uh, the intensity. In this case, it's a mean curvature plus not plus basically union the uh, the conform factor because the area distortion is equal to the uh, the divergence. Okay, so here g is a diffusivity uh, 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 function. Okay, basically it's a, a non non decrease uh, 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 function. Okay, so here basically we combine from channel one to channel m. In this case, we only have two channel. Basically, one channel for for mean curvature, one channel for the uh, conformal factor. So we use this to define the speed of the uh, of the diffusion. Okay, and then this is the gradient of the uh, intensity. So if you run this, uh, if you solve this partial division equations, and very easily you can uh, get this kind of uh, iterative uh, solution. Okay, so basically the new value, okay, the new value at the pixel level is equal to the old pixel level plus the combination of the four neighborhood, okay? So you can do iterative solver to solve this uh, uh, equations. So here rho is the uh, 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 basically coefficient developed from this kind of g, okay? This is non, this is diffusivity uh, function. So it depends on what kind of uh, diffusivity, uh, diffi uh, diffusivity uh, function you use. You have a different rho, okay? You have a different rho. So here, uh, the delta n here means gradient, okay? Gradient, north direction gradient, south direction gradient, east direction gradient, and the west direction gradient, okay? And here is the uh, C, 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 E, basically it's the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, speed function you can compute from this kind of a G, okay? This, this is the speed function G, okay? Diffusivity function G. And gradient, it's a little bit different here. When you compute gradient, you do I, you do, for example, here is NOS. NOS means the I minus one to I, right? So I minus one to I, you divide not by one. If it's pixel level, then you divide by one. Basically, it's the top neighbor, okay, north neighbor. But in this case, we use geodesic distance. Basically, you here, you plug in the geodesic distance, okay, GLD, okay? Basically, this is already pre-computed, not in the uh, diffusion, uh, uh, not computed on the fly, okay? So this is the final uh, integration from the current image to the next one image. So if you can see the, Video shows here basically is a diffused procedure, okay, from the beginning till the end, okay, from the beginning till the end, okay. So if you if you organize all the diffusion from T0, T1, T2, T3 until Tn together, so basically this is a diffusion space, okay. So this is the diffusion space. Uh huh. So that's the minimum distance between the two points 
on the surface. Basically, you cannot jump in out of the surface or inside the surface. You can only walk on the surface. So from point A to point B, what's the minimal distance? You walk from A to B on the surface. Yeah. OK. <coughs> so then we uh, take the similar approach like in SWIFT. We take the, uh, the uh, T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, all the sequence. Okay. We do the uh, difference of Gaussian. So in this case, it's we, we, we don't we, we don't use Gaussian. We use uh, uh, diffusion per se. So it's the difference of diffusion from i at time t i plus one point minus previous time point. Okay, so you get the difference image. So you get this and you get this and you get this, and then you find the maximum ones in this local neighborhood. Okay, in this local neighborhood, and this point serves as a ceiling point under the support of the neighbor. So how ceiling I am basically uh, under uh, uh, what kind of size, okay, what kind of size, to give you a more intuitive, uh, uh, like this, okay. If you look at the very tiny scales, okay, this is salient, okay. Okay, this is salient because of, like, so this circle indicating the size, okay, so how this point is salient, okay, at what kind of size, at what kind of size, okay. So the interesting he thing here is basically you can basically in the feature uh, uh, descriptor, okay, in the feature descriptor, because finding this point is very easy, right? You can say oh maximum uh, curvature, pretty much you can find all the points. But sometimes you find lots of like things around one neighbors, and you only choose one, and then for this one, for example, nose, it's salient under basically uh, within uh, what kind of scope, okay? It's like salient amount, say, for example, this student is good, right? It's good in terms of what? In terms of like in the, within the class, within the uh, WE department, or within the entire uh, Louisiana State University. So, the, so basically we get the comparison, okay, how salient it is, okay, by considering the neighborhood, or by, by considering the neighborhood, okay? So in this case, you can construct the, uh, basically the features, okay? So if this is salient point, Okay, you know the neighborhood is like this much. Okay, and then you do the uh, uh, histogram of uh, orientation. Okay, you do histogram of orientation. So, so basically histogram of orientation of the normal or curvature. You can do whatever uh, feature you sample. Basically, you can figure out, okay, this point is important, and in the, this size, okay, and you can see how important it is and under what kind of scope. And this supports very uh, 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 interesting matching uh, uh, so for interesting uh, matching purpose. Because if you only take a look at the uh, uh, curvature, okay, you can say, oh, this is high curvature, and this is also high curvature. You can map this point to this point, okay? If you have a lot of cross match, okay? If you don't consider the scale, don't consider the size, you have a lot of cross match, okay? So here, I only show here maybe like 10, 11. So here, usually for brains, we can find at least 120, 120 uh, uh, plus minus, a very stable points to link between one to another. Okay, so for example, if you consider this point, if you also can do the intrinsic scales, you compute it. Okay, and then this point can only map to this point, not the self-similarity points like, for example, like this case. Maybe you can also map to this this part, right? Even for this part, can map to this part because they are looking very similar. But if you consider the scales, okay, and the Mapping become very unique. Okay, I'm not saying exactly unique, but very unique. Okay, become very unique. Okay. Yes. So this is done by no, automatic, automatic. So basically, <coughs> for each point. So this is just simply the nearest neighbor. Uh, so for example, right for this point, I know the size of the point. I know the size of the point, right? So I know the point, and also the, the size, the scale size. So basically, then in this case, feature descriptor, okay? Feature descriptor, how to define the feature. I take this point, I take the size computed from the diffusion, okay? And then I sample the, for example, the distribution of curv curvature, or distribution of the uh, normal directions, right? So we can form the feature, fact feature uh, vector. So in this case, we uh, do the uh, 108, Beans, so you get a 128 dimension-based vector descriptor, okay? Okay. So then, for each point, I have a 
128 vector. So basically, I use nearest neighbor to find the the matching counterpart in the other brain. Okay, so it's automatically done by. So we don't use any uh, fancy uh, 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 basically matching like graph matching things. We just use nearest neighbor. They give us pretty good results on on this. Okay, like for face. Okay, and if you only consider uh, 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 the corner, you can say that uh, the the corner of the mouth may be very similar to the corner of the eyes. Okay. If you look at it, you don't care the scale. You just look at the rough curvature information. Okay, quite quite similar. Okay, but if you also consider the scale, okay, like here we consider this, and they even discard this kind of uh, a point. Basically, this is not very salient under different scales. Okay, so we only choose a very robust salient point. Okay, and this can give us very good corresponding informations, and you can find for similar presents with different expressions. Okay, you can still find like more than 100 points matched between this one to this neutral expression to the uh, 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 smiling. But for different persons, okay, you find very few, okay, we find very few uh, 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 basically matched points. So just use this single uh, uh, feature, like we can use it for face recognition. Okay, so that's what we did for uh, 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 this is CVPR, we use this for, and if you, cons of course, I'm not saying this is the only way, but if you consider geometry and texture all together, it gives you much better the uh, uh, results, okay? So for, uh, uh, if you do it for 1,000 uh, cases, we have, uh, if you download this, like Albany, there's 1,000 cases, okay? 1,000 prisons, okay? If you do this kind of uh, uh, analysis, you can get roughly 95%, consider texture and uh, geometry together, you get 95% accuracy. Uh, uh, so this is pretty uh, good in face recognition. Yes. Yeah. So this one basically, in this case, basically they try to find the expression invariant features. Basically, otherwise, if you, for example, if you use a, a corner of the mouse, might not be stable because when you smile or neutral face, this curvature information, even texture information, all changes. Okay, so these two points might not be the good point. It's itself is salient, but in, in terms of matching, it's not good. So we only consider those kind of actually the eye corner, those kind of more static uh, points as the uh, 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 as feature points to, to facilitate the matching and the recognition. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, uh, you know, for, for, for persons with different face, this geometry feature is very very significantly, so you can use this for 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 recognition purpose. Yeah. So in the necessary for the first person and the second person, you should have the same number of features. Uh, same number of feature points? Yeah. No. We just do the uh, uh, <coughs> scale space, which just like I said, right? We map to the 2D domain and we compute all the uh, feature points. Okay? I don't care how many, I just compute all the feature points. And then I send it here. And for this one, I do the same. I take this, I map it to the, and I find all the feature points. And then I do the uh, nearest neighbor. So this point, for example, this point has one, 128 vectors, right? And this point, all have one. So which one is the closest to this one? So the is one, one, two, one. Not necessarily to one, one. And then I count. Oh, from this face to this face, that's 100 points matched. And for this two faces, only three points matched. So I, I can know, oh yeah, if a point is matching more than certain threshold, I say this is the same person. If there are very few matched, so there are two different persons. So that's what we did for the uh, experiments, yeah. <coughs> so this thing actually worked quite nice, but it has some problem, right? So basically if you look at this kind of uh, 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 procedure, basically it takes a mapping which maps the uh, manifold to a image domain, right? And then you do diffusion on the image domain from I to the diffusion space. So it's like you do the uh, composition, F, compos F compose D together, you get a diffusion space, right? Okay, so it's very good, but still we cannot prove, okay? We tried very hard to, the results is very comparable to the uh, current one we developed. But unfortunately here we cannot prove this satisfies the uh, Maxwell principle uh, theory and also the uh, Gaussian Cauchy, I mean, the Cauchy uh, properties. So that's why we had another uh, uh, paper uh, uh, on the uh, intrinsic diffusion, okay? So here I just uh, 
show you the uh, uh, rather quickly ideas. Okay, so you map 3D to 2D image, and then you run division on 2D images, and then it's like you con constructing a, uh, you're constructing the uh, division space, and then you do the feature extractions. So can we just go read out? Since you cannot prove it, right? So yeah, from engineering point of view, it's good. I mean, as long as we get good results, but theoretically, it's not elegant because you cannot prove that this satisfies the uh, scale space. And why this is correct, maybe just luck. And uh, so, so we can we get rid of the uh, uh, the middle uh, part, okay, the transition, like the image, from 3D to 2D, and then run division on 2D. So we try to do division directly on the uh, 3D surface, okay, on the 3D surface. So there are quite a few uh, 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 geometric flows which serve this purpose, okay. So you can run diffusion, you can run uh, Gaussian diffusion, uh, uh, Gaussian curvature diffusion, Gaussian curvature flow, okay, mean curvature flow, or Ricci flow, right, recently used, right. So you can use, but mainly I would say if you use a like Gaussian curvature flow or Ricci flow, okay, which defined on the uh, intrinsic Gaussian curvature will be much easier for your proof, right? Because this is more intrinsic than the mean curvature and other geometric uh, 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 measures, okay? So very <coughs> uh, intuitively, okay? So basically, uh, this diffusion is directly uh, worked on the uh, uh, Riemann metric, okay, over T. It's the velocity is defined by the Gaussian curvature, okay? It's defined by Ga Gaussian curvature, okay? So it's very simple. We just take the simple version and then uh, discretize it, okay? If we take the, uh, 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 the Riemann metric defined as the, uh, uh, this function, and then we can convert the, the reach flow directly like this, okay? So by the uh, curvature. So curvature, you can compute the inner curvature and the boundary curvatures, okay? So, so this is actually uh, what we did together with uh, uh, Devi uh, Gu, so we did this uh, together, and we take uh, the his uh, numerical uh, uh, algorithms and run the diffusion directly. Okay, run the diffusion directly. So basically, you can convert the uh, uh, the Ricci flow problem to the uh, basically uh, using circle packing to to solve this uh, solve this uh, uh, diffusion flow. Okay, diffusion flow. Basically, you can redefine the uh, 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 diffusion equation using the edge lines. Okay, you get the edge lines. So here the uh, the, the gamma here basically indicating the edge lines between the two vertices, okay, using as radius, okay, as a radius, okay, as a radius. So in the final case, of course, you, you want to get Ri plus Rj equal to Lij, basically this is Ri, for example, this is Rj, you get totally flat, okay, so you can totally flat this kind of, uh, 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 so this is a circle packing, you can get a uh, sin perfect scenario. But in this case, we're gonna, we're not using this for for parameterization, so what we need to do is just constructing the diffusion uh, sequence, okay? As long as this uh, intrinsic, okay, based on the uh, Gaussian curvature, we are, we are good, okay, we are good. So this is the uh, uh, evidence we had, basically discretized, okay, low triangle mesh, okay? Estimate the initial circle uh, packing metric based on the radius and uh, the edge length, okay? And then from t to t equal to zero, okay, from t to zero, we start this kind of uh, uh, numerical, okay? This numerical uh, simulation, okay? Numerical simulation, and basically we run for certain t, okay? So this uh, there's no proof here how large t you should go. Basically, this is more experimental things. How t large is t? How big is delta t? Is is experimental things, okay? It's very experimental thing. So for each vertex, we compute the Gaussian curvature, okay? And uh, uh, <coughs> If it's in, we do it only for interior uh, vertex, okay? We do it only for interior, and then we update the uh, the edge lines and also the, uh, the, the, the 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 curvature, okay? And and the, the radius, okay? And then finally, uh, if it's not good enough, if it's not reach the highest t, we go back and t do, we keep doing this kind of diffusion process, okay? We keep doing this diffusion process, and then here. Finally, you can use the Gaussian curvature to form the diffusion space, okay? So th this is the curvature at T0, T1, T2, Tn. So curvature is sampled on all the vertex sets, okay? On all the vertex sets. So basically, this is uh, at T0, then basically it's the uh, curvature map of the original surface, okay? And T1, basically, you diffuse once, okay? You diffuse once, you get the new curvature map for the diffused uh, uh, surface, okay? For the diffuser. So in this case, you can form the entire entire things, okay? 
and uh, for this actually uh, you can prove the uh, the Gaussian uh, uh, the the, the causality property and the scale invariance uh, property and the parallelism properties okay so you can don't for, for this you can run this for each individual vertex you can do the so here we use the GPU so you can use it you can do parallel programming very easily okay you can do parallel programming very easily okay and also you can do uh, 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 lots of things so I skip this probably so for, but I want to just mention it okay if you follow this okay you can prove basically uh, consider smooth function f okay it satisfies basically all the maximum principles okay it's within the boundary okay it's within the boundary so no matter what you do this intrinsic diffusion will not introduce any additional features during this procedure so all the features you find at like say t10 uh, uh, k, uh, t10 scale or t100 scales it all belongs to the t0 okay all belongs to the shape of t0 okay there are no any uh, uh, new uh, signal or new uh, features will be introduced during this sequence. Okay, so that's basically uh, uh, maxima within this L is always equal. To, is always find within the boundary. Okay, so you do the domain. So this is the domain L. If you do this, you always find them within the boundary. Okay, so that's the proof we had. If you're interested, you can read our papers for this uh, for this proof. And uh, uh, similarly, uh, you can prove the uh, causality of the uh, uh, intrinsic. Uh, geometry scale space okay so this is the first formal proof for for using curvature flows you can get this geometry scale space okay get geometry scale space and same thing you can sample the features because you know the point you know how large the scale is so you can use like uh, 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 normalize for example normalize the uh, 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 Laplacian operator to compute the uh, uh, compute the features okay the features at the local neighborhood at the local neighborhood for example, here, and uh, we use local neighborhood and uh, compute this difference of Gaussian. So in this case, it's a difference of diffusion. And then you find the maximum one, just like in 2D case, still in the 2D case. And then in any point, for example, oh, this is CDN, okay, this is curve CDN, and then you know how large this red, for example, how large is CDN in terms of how large scale, right, in terms of how large scale. So you are not like a when you do the mapping and do the uh, uh, matching, you are not using this single point curvature to find the uh, matching uh, uh, curvature. You find a million, okay? In the other, you find a million. Like if you do this, you can find lots of different, for example, fingertip. You can find this one, this one, this one. They are all pretty much similar, okay? But if you consider scales, the, the CDN point here has different scale than this. So if you consider CDN and then the scale together, you won't find a very uh, uh, one to many uh, 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 map mapping, okay? One to many mapping. Okay, so here we use the uh, geodesic fence, okay? Actually, this is by the uh, 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 another uh, paper published in Shape Modeling. They use this. Uh, basically, you get a salient point and you know the scales. Basically, we use the geodesic fence, okay? So basically, along this geodesic, okay? So if we define this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and we sample the curvature. Okay, we sample the curvature. So you can define the a histogram. You can define the histogram and use it, you sample the histogram as a feature vector. You can use it for matching purpose. Okay, you can use it for matching purpose. <coughs> so we try some like simple uh, tests. For example, you can use it for mesh simplification. Okay, and uh, you, because you know how salient it is and how large the scales, so you can do mesh simplification. Okay, so basically do adaptive mesh. Okay, like this. If you do uh, very simple uh, uh, mesh simplification, that's what you get. You basically uh, lose details. Okay, so this has the same amount of vertices after decimation. But if you apply the scales and the the features, so you get uh, feature preserving uh, uh, mesh simplification. Okay, so that's another case. You can see the eyes areas. You get uh, uh, much better results. Okay, you can get much better results. So this gives you the uh, the key point roughly. Okay, so the the size of the ball indicating the the scale. Okay, in indicating the scale. So you can see uh, usually for flat areas you get large scales. Okay, you get large scales. But this is still salient point. It's salient under these large scales. Okay, you cannot if you only use very like high curvature points. It's not good actually. Not, they're not stable. If you only do the uh, pose mapping. This like lag, this area is also important. You want to find the correspondence. You, you, you want to say, oh, I only find like tiny uh, high frequency features. Also for the low frequency features, you still need them. 
Okay, you still need them. So that's the uh, beauty of the uh, scale space. You can find the low frequency features, salient low frequency features. And this sometimes is even more important than the high frequency because the high frequency sometimes is just noise. If it goes too high, it just become noise. Okay, you can find many uh, one to many or many to one mappings instead of like one to one uh, 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 matching. Okay, so this is just some noise test. I skip that. Uh, so similarly, uh, we did for the. Uh, case with like what we had in uh, uh, in uh, in two D case in the mapping case. Okay, so for the same person, different person, you find a significant amount of uh, a significant number of uh, differences. Okay, in terms of uh, matched points. Okay. <coughs> so and uh, not necessary for not necessary for the uh, actually. Uh, directly on the geometry, okay? If you apply it on frequency domain, still you can have this kind of multi-spectrum, okay, properties, okay? So, simply, like, what do we know, like, Laplacian, okay? Like Laplacian, Benjamin operator, okay? If you do the uh, uh, generalized linear decomposition, you can decompose the shape, for example, to, right, the lower, high, I mean, this is the first thing, uh, 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 eigen, 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 eigen function, okay? very non-trivial eigenfunction. And then higher frequency eigen, higher, 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 you can get much better details, okay, from the uh, very initial one to the, so usually we sample 100s, okay, so we usually we sample 100 from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 100, and more, more and more details will be uh, added into this, okay. But this is based on the, uh, it's like more like a uh, frequency domain, okay, it's more like a frequency domain. So this shows you the uh, eigenvalue and eigenfunctions if you directly do the uh, 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 projected on the uh, uh, 2D, okay? Then I'll show you this, okay? And this nice thing is for this uh, 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 eigen analysis actually is, even though the poles are different, okay? For the same eigenfunction and eigenvalue, okay? If we project on the different poles, they share the great similarity, see? It's red, red, blue, blue, green, green. So it's like articular motion invariant, okay? It's like articular motion invariant. So that's a very good property. Like for example here, this is uh, uh, the fifth eigenfunction, okay? It's the fifth eigenfunction. We do the uh, uh, color plot on the, uh, uh, on the body. You can see, even for this pose, this pose, this pose, they're also similar, they're also same, okay? So it's like uh, uh, articular motion, uh, 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 invariant, okay, articular motion invariant. <coughs> so this is good because you can, if you want to do the pose analysis, the pose matching, you want this kind of invariant, okay. So invariant is good for for matching purpose. For this hand, if you can recognize this hand, if I do this way, you should be able to recognize this is also a hand, okay. For human, there's no problem. For for computer, you need to find a feature which doesn't change when you do this or do this, okay? So this is basically why we did this uh, uh, multi-spectrum uh, features as well. Same thing we did is uh, we compute the salient point based on from, from the uh, uh, low frequency to the high frequency. From the low frequency to the high frequency, we want to see when the new frequency added, what's the feature added on top of it, okay? On top of it, and we choose these points as stable points for, for matching, for, for recognition. Okay, for recognition. Okay, so as, for example, you can do this. <coughs> you can do this. Okay, you can match it from one hand to hand, even though they change. So you can do checking quite easily. And also from part to whole, basically this is MP problem, okay? If you do from the part to whole, okay, it's MP problem. But with the, uh, uh, if you know exactly this answer from this part portion to this entire portion, and you can do some uh, a trick to still match from part to whole, okay? But this is only uh, a trick you used, but it's not, generally it's, generally it's an MP problem, you cannot solve it, you cannot solve it. Okay, so i just show you a, a couple of uh, uh, applications we did on top of this uh, uh, technique, actually i show you this. So we know, right, so as I said, so from one point, one motion to another motion, as long as it's articular, okay, so the uh, frequency won't be changed, okay, the eigen, eigen function will be not changed, will not be changed. So when you do this, do this, okay? This is a one, this is another one, this is another one, okay? We do the clustering of the changing spot, okay? To the changing spot. So basically, if we know there's sudden change 
on the on the on the eigenvalue. Okay, we we'll do the clustering of the neighborhood. Okay, to the clustering of, of the neighborhood, and then this part usually must be um, not usually must be the join points. Okay, must be the join points. So in order to detect this kind of feature, okay, for example, this is not a feature, right? You do this, it's not a feature. But if you do this, this becomes a feature. Okay, this becomes a feature in frequency domain. Okay, so you know, okay, from this pose to this pose, suddenly you're adding the new features. Okay, and you do search, you can find this is joined. You can find this is joined. So that's uh, one of my students did. Okay, in the original, for example, this original shape, it is the it is the eigen eigen value. Okay, eigen function plot. Okay, you do contraction. So that's what you got. Okay, sorry, this one. Sorry for the contrast. So that's what you got. You don't you didn't find any uh, uh, joint. So that's a skeleton. Okay, you can usually use like contraction or PDE or you can you can find a skeleton. But that's static. Okay, and then if there's another pose like this, from here to here, okay, certain join changed. Okay, certain join changed. And then this from this to this gives you some information. For example, maybe neck you're adding one more join, and here the leg you're adding one more join. So as long as you have like uh, uh, enough information of different poses you can get very uh, meaningful uh, uh, basically uh, uh, semantic skeletons okay indicating which is joint how large de degree of freedom of the joint okay so that's what we did so the, the input is a set of static things okay and then you can automatically figure out big, big based on the uh, clustering and then the uh, frequency which is joined and which joint can move and then when animated stretch it change it Okay, they can automatically tell you you cannot bend more than that. Okay, because it's not allowed based on the example. So it's like an example driven, and also you know this, and you find the similar ones. You can easily transfer the motion from one to the other. Okay, because the skeletons, the joints. So you know, oh, this is uh, this is motion joint. So you can automatically transfer this. Okay, so that's one of my students there. Okay, <coughs> and also like this. Okay, so I just show. It's distorted. So this is a colonoscopy. Okay, so this is colonoscopy. So, and uh, lately, in the market, still the uh, so basically virtual colonoscopy with preparation. So basically, the the content the inside, basically the the stools, water is inside the colon should be physically cleansed out. Okay either using a uh, medicine or basically physical like wash wash column and then you can do the endoscope visualization okay and Endo endoscope visualization so you can see the clean uh, surface so that you can identify polyp tumor whatever okay so actually recently what we did is the uh, the using the uh, my scale shape analysis to get rid of so basically unprepared okay so if the column filled with uh, stools areas like this okay so in the left part is stools, airs, okay, and the right part shows the cleansed one, okay, digital cleansing, okay, so this is digital cleansing. So can we basically uh, uh, tolerate patients with air and stools inside? So basically, patient can go to the uh, uh, scan room without any preparation and do the physical exam. That would be uh, quite appealing to at least to 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 customers, to patients, so especially for 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 physical exam. You don't want to say. I mean, basically, uh, have a diet for three days don't, without eating anything, only, only fluid for three days, and then take some medicine to throw out all the things. Usually, take three days to prepare the colon into a wonderful uh, condition without any, any uh, uh, residues inside. Without any, because the residues inside could be potentially similar to tumor, because this is uh, just imaging, right? Imaging of the stool, imaging of the poly, uh, imaging of the uh, uh, tissue, the, the intensity. Quite similar, okay. The intensity quite similar, okay. So you cannot differentiate that. So, <coughs> and also with it, it's like okay. So now you can see this. Is what, what is this? So basically, this is the uh, eigen eigen function, okay. It's eigen function. You plot eigen function for supine. Supine is the position you facing up. Prime position is you are uh, facing down, okay. So basically, in the uh, or virtual colonoscopy, the scan twice, okay. Facing up, or facing down. Basically, you have two data. Why? Because this is important. Because if this is stool, you're facing up, it's attaching to the uh, uh, bottom side. Okay, you're facing down, it's attaching to the other side. If this is the, the 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 residue is moving, that means it's not tumor, it's not cancer. Okay, basically it's a it's a, it's a content, it's a, a, a residue content inside inside. 
So that's why we need to do the uh, supply and the prime registration in this case. Okay. So if you put the uh, 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 eigen function plotted on the supine position and the prime position, you can see they are very similar. Okay, they are very similar in terms of features. Okay, and then you run the uh, multi-spectrum features. You find the key point. You will find the key point basically is the tori. Okay, it's tori. So basically, you can find these folds. Okay, each fold is uh, it's very robust. And as you can do folds by folds, you can get a very nice registration. Okay, you can get a very nice registration. So that's uh. Uh, so you can see, see this case how you can use this kind of uh, uh, nice matching to to basically uh, figure out the uh, the false positive in this case. So you can just see through one column from one side, okay, from one side. Oh, see you see this like uh, uh, little things. You're not sure what is this. It's a stool, or it's a polyp, or it's a tumor. You don't know. You just double click it because we already registered this using the uh, spectrum. So you find this is quite. It's just perfectly smooth. That means the thing is move. It's moved. Okay. So basically, the thing is moving when you do one scan and then another scan. The thing is moved from the the spot. So basically, it's not the thing. So basically, use this. You can further reduce the uh, false positive rate. Okay, false positive rate. Okay. So <coughs> another thing we did is for the uh, brain imaging, but still based on this kind of. Uh, uh, multi scale and multi spectrum uh, imaging. Okay, so just like I showed you before, if you map to 2D or you directly run on the, uh, you can take the uh, 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 feature points. Okay, and based on feature points, you can do the uh, registration. Okay, you can simply use like simple based deformation to align both to minimize the energy and you can get the uh, one to one mapping. Okay, you can do the one to one. Mapping. So this is just evaluation uh, actually did by uh, uh, Michigan Children's Hospital. Okay, we did, we just sent them software, they did it for us. So this is the color map we get. Okay, color map with red means the high error. It's only like 1.8 millimeter in this case, and 1.4 on this case. So you can see, this is five. We did it on five brains. Okay, for example, if we map five brains, so red one is the uh, target ones. Okay, and the four green ones means the four individual brains. Okay, if you map, how close they stay. Okay, so that's why the maximum in this case maximum is only 1.4 millimeter. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, Accuracy, okay, pretty good. So why we need align like so many brains together, okay? Because once you align, like say for example, hundred brains, if you align them together, then basically you do subdivision or simple like unit uh, uh, subdivision. Then you can say, oh, number one element. What's the probability of number one element? You can directly query at this spot, okay? And you know, oh, this one, for example, this is suspicious, okay? And I know the, the the value for this, okay. And then oh, what's the value for the other 99 normal person, okay? So this can automatically goes because it's already indexed. So this is one, 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 one. So for different brains, you find it exactly same spot, okay? So you can easily get the value. Okay? You can easily get a value. So like just show you one more example, like here. <coughs> this is the position emission tomography used for epilepsy detection. So which uh, which area is epileptic Okay, so. So this uh, texture map is position emission tomography measure. Okay. So this measures the brain activity under certain chaser. Okay. Basically, the thing injected into your brain, and then your brain will have a digesting this uh, a chemical. Okay. And will create different patterns. Okay. Create different patterns. And it's not like single thresholding. Okay. Red under beyond certain threshold is abnormal. Lower certain threshold is abnormal. No, that's not because the brain itself is heterogeneous. Some parts are supposed to be very hot. Some parts are supposed to be cold. Okay, so it's not homogeneous. So in this case, okay, say, oh, this is hot. Is this area always ab abnormal? No, you have to compare this other, like say, ten normals, twenty normals. How other guys, okay, their brains at this spot? What are their activity patterns? So that's why you need a very good registration and alignment. Okay, so here you get this, and uh, then this gives you very automatic analysis. Okay, very automatic analysis. You take a certain part, and you get the, for example, this part, this triangle. Okay, automatically find the triangle features. Okay, find this is red one. Okay, red one. And what are the others? Okay, so then, for example, if this is like say. The 98th triangle, and then this automatically goes to uh, goes to the database and search the 
98 triangle for other 99 brains and then bring up and then do the average and you can see the statistical uh, difference so this gives you okay so this is the abnormal by compare by, by comparing to other normals okay by other normals so this has been used by by uh, some yeah, by our uh, uh, university hospitals okay so we have a quite large hospitals in there and then they also ask okay so if the certain part is spot is abnormal and how other parts will be affected then you have to go to the inside right then you have to go to the inside through the neuron connectivity to figure out uh, this brings the uh, problem from the surface to the body magic case okay so from this part so, oh this is very hot because brain is not just standalone isolated things there well connected, well organized. It's a networking thing. Okay. If there is abnormal, very high electricity uh, uh, information there, and brain tends to protect themselves, they will either signal the uh, the linkage from this point, from this spot to this this spot. They will signal to reduce the uh, electricity energy. Okay. To reduce the electricity energy. So how do you find the the inner uh, uh, difference? So basically, you need a volumetric mapping. So currently, we are doing this, but we haven't down yet but we still can do it using surface case okay I don't care inside just like tentatively uh, tentative solutions I only care from this spot to this spot what's the connectivity strength and using the uh, 2d map we can see okay oh yeah so from this part frontal so you can see we need to mapping from here you can do here and green you can do here okay and then from this part from green part to the uh, frontal part how many fibers starting from them that direction and ending at this direction so you can plot them and you can do the uh, uh, cross subject analysis as well so basically this gives you the query informations okay query informations so so this is just some uh, 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 time series analysis basically you can follow the disease change okay disease change so that's our latest uh, work we are trying to <coughs> basically uh, uh, visualize the large database okay so if you have like large database okay can I automatically uh, uh, find a similar cases which support my clinical di diagnosis for well, this one yeah I never see this kind of patient be this kind of a scenario before okay say so I'm junior doctor I'm, I'm I didn't see this kind of things before can you find automatically find similar cases in the database okay and uh, give me some hints or things so that's uh, uh, what we did actually using the uh, table visualization things so basically we plot uh, the thousand brains okay so this is 1000 brains on 2d domain okay using the uh, uh, clustering method okay using clustering so the hopefully the distance okay gives us the similarity measure okay and then when some when an individual brain is coming out we snap into the map okay and then if it, if it's just inside all right see the, see the circle one if it's just here and then you automatically you can say oh ah let's look at the neighborhood okay see the neighborhood brains how it look like and then it goes here this gives you the neighborhood okay to the in 3d so you can see oh this is my this is the brain i'm investigating and these are the brains from the database okay suppose these should be the similar cases okay and then plot them row by row and then while you are editing or analyzing these brains suppose these things will automatically change the ranking will change oh we find the even similar ones so we only show the three the most the, the 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 closest three okay show you okay these are the closest three cases which can support your uh, uh, diagnosis so that's uh, uh, what we are doing uh, in the in the past year okay so we, ju we just started for one year on this okay so quite a lot of information but generally speaking I just want to give you the uh, 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 a perspective say how can we use geometry for medical imaging analysis okay for medical imaging analysis for vision for for vision okay for graphics we know right for those kind of things so so probably you already know we can use geometry for a lot of things but just give you a little perspective so the examples I give here more from uh, medical imaging uh, uh, applications so how these kind of uh, geometric tools uh, especially the geometry scale space processing can use for feature extraction matching these are two are very fundamental uh, uh, tasks in uh, medical imaging uh, applications okay and uh, <coughs> so recently we start some like volumetric uh, case and some even temporal temporal shape so okay for example the driving 
this is autonomous driving, so the car driving on the road, you get a digital scan, okay, so neighborhood. So how do you analyze the, uh, the, the, the real-time 3D motion or hot motion, for example? So actually, we did some work, like for hot motion, can we do the uh, uh, deformation curve? You can find, okay, normal time sequence, an abnormal time sequence. So that's what we are doing also uh, in, the re in the recent uh, days. Okay, so finally, uh, I want to thank our medical collaborators, uh, Otto, uh, Jeff, they're from uh, radiology and neurology at Wayne State University. And also we have some collaboration with uh, David Xiangfenggu uh, from Computer Science uh, Stony Brook University. And also uh, my postdoc and uh, uh, Guang Yuzhou and my students, okay, my students. So they've been uh, very working very hard for some demos and the large systems. And uh, finally, I uh, want to thank you for the funding agencies supporting uh, our uh, research from NSF and NIH, and also the state of Michigan, quite lucky from, from Michigan. So uh, a lot of people ask me why Michigan still has a lot of money uh, for, for investing in our research. <laughs> so finally, thank you for your attention. Welcome for any question. Fiber tracks, right? Yes. Yes. The fiber geometric properties with the geodesic distance along the fiber track, producing the Euclidean distance along each segment. No, we didn't do the the inside. So for inside, we have not covered this talk. But what we do is, from surface to surface, we know how many fibers, okay, or how many the radius, okay, coming out from this spot, and how many goes to the certain spot. So we compute this called. We call it the fiber track strength. Uh -huh. So if I'm a fi 100 fibers coming out, and 50 goes to this direction, and 50 goes to that direction, in terms of the cortical area, okay? Then we call this strand is 0 0.5 strength. Okay. So that's for the cortical cortical analysis. For the inside, we do is the curvature of the bundle. We don't do the uh, uh, distance. Okay. According to the, our collaborator, they said the, the smoothness of the bundle is an important measure for the neuron uh, 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 disease. Basically, if the, we have a one picture, which I just showed actually uh, uh, this morning, so for example, so actually this paper is still there. So for example, like this, this is in the bundle. So these two are all abnormal, okay? So they are supposed to be quite smooth. Okay, but if you do the surface uh, uh, extraction and the surface uh, segmentation, and you find this uh, uh, from linking from <coughs> this is this is a, a epilepsy patient. You can see from tiny, from one spot to another spot, this kind of like it's very bumpy surface. Okay, so for inside we just currently we use this. We don't use any geodesic distance, and also there's some like distortion. Okay, suppose like from this it's like a talk to uh, Dr. Lee uh, this morning. From this spot to this spot, right? Suppose like they do this. If this is a tumor grow in the middle, they will push this fiber away. Yeah. So eventually you get this shape, because this shape. So we also use this kind of uh, curvature change for, 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 for. Say, say that again? Mm -hmm. I didn't quite get your question. So you compute the uh, curvature of the surface. Mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So here we, yeah, right. So here we use the uh, 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 matrix. So we directly run the uh, uh, region growing on the diffusion tensor field. Yeah. So we don't do checks. In this case, we don't do checks. Uh, my question is, you could also use the diffusion tensor itself as a matrix. Mm-hmm. If you use the curvature using the diffusion tensor as a matrix, then you might have a different kind of curvature than using the hidden matrix. Yeah. That's right. Like that? So we haven't dig out that much on this uh, on this feature, yeah, yeah, on this feature, yeah. We sh we started we yeah. So for this, we only rely on the information input from the uh, doctor. So they have insights of what kind of feature we extract, and we just follow their clinical knowledge. But yeah. you have the full diffusion uh, tensor available, right? Yes. So you could use the diffusion tensor as a That's right. I think so. I think so. Yeah. OK. 
แฟนการส่วน